In this video, I'm going to be going over my personal pregnancy supplements that I take every day, the why or the reason behind them, and the science. Hi, my name is Dancy Pinkston, also known as Fearless Mama, and on this channel, I like to talk about birth topics, mindset, pregnancy, motherhood. So if you're interested in joining along, please hit that red subscribe button down below and we'll get started on this video. Okay, so I come from a nutrition background. I majored in nutrition, so I have a little knowledge on this, but I am presenting this to you as just a mom and so always just talk to your care provider before starting any new supplement and you should be good. Before I bought any of these supplements, I made sure that the companies are pure and are authentic. And so one of the ways to do that is to try to buy products that have either the GOED, G-O-E-D standard for purity or is third-party tested um, that usually has a stamp on it. And that shows that they're probably safe and actually contain what they say they do. So I think that's so important before you start purchasing supplements. But I'm going to go over each brand that I personally take and you are welcome to copy. <laughs> Anyways, so the first thing that I bought is the Mega Food prenatal, um, the baby and me, with the methylfolate in it. So the recommended prenatal should have at least 100% of the requirement for certain key nutrients such as folic acid, 400 mcgs of that at least, um, iron, and vitamin B12 is important to be in prenatals. And the reason is the requirement for these nutrients are increased during pregnancy. And sometimes it can be nearly impossible to get these sorts of nutrients from your diet alone. Just take into consideration how morning sickness changes you and just how we live in America and we eat processed foods and things like that. One of the important differences in or among prenatal vitamins is the source or form the nutrients are in. I'm super particular about this especially. I do not think all vitamins are the same. So food-based vitamins are what I strive for. I wanted my vitamins to be food-based, and which this one is, because they are in the more bioavailable form, which absorbs and processes in your body much better than the man-made synthetic vitamins. You know, if I'm going to be spending money on a vitamin and thinking that it's doing something, I want it to be actually absorbing in my body and doing what it's supposed to be doing. The next important thing with a prenatal is making sure that it has folic acid in the L-methylated folate form. So the L-methyl folate form or methylated folate, folate is another word. So I really wanted the folic acid that is always recommended in pregnancy to be in the already active form. And there's plenty of reasons for that. The main reason is because it's in the most bioavailable form for your body to process compared to the synthetic man-made folic acid. So taking the more bioavailable form of any nutrient guarantees that the adequate amounts are being provided. Now granted, um, the synthetic vitamins, if that's all you can afford or if that's what insurance is going to be paying for with prescriptions, it's definitely better than nothing at all throughout pregnancy and actually preferably in pre-pregnancy. But the reason why I'm so particular about this is because 40 to 60% of the population has a genetic polymorphism such as the MTHFR gene. I don't know if you're familiar with that, 
but it is a mutated gene that impair the conversion of folic acid to its active form. So it never really gets that folic acid into the active form to then be used. So Stacy J. Bell's nutritionist advice is to prescribe prenatal vitamins containing l methylfolate instead of folic acid for women with a family history of neural tube defects or preterm births. Okay, so why is it so important that we take this folic acid, folate, why are we recommended methyl folate form um, during pregnancy? Okay, and I'm going to read this right off of a reviewed study that I found. Deficiency of dietary folic acid can lead to abnormalities in the mother such as anemia, peripheral neuropathy, and the fetus, congenital abnormalities, also the dietary supplementation of folic acid around the time of conception has been known to reduce the risk of neural tube defects or NTDs. Also, folic acid is thought to reduce the risk of preterm births and congenital heart disease. There is also preliminary evidence that L-methylfolate may be useful to prevent post-pregnancy anemia. Also, according to the CDC, between the 17th and 13th, 30th day after conception, the neural tube forms in the developing baby and then closes. So by the time people are finding out that they're pregnant, this, um, you know, neural tube has already formed. That's why it's so important to, you know, plan your pregnancies if you can. I know that's difficult and already be taking a prenatal um, beforehand, especially if you're in those childbearing years. So at four to six weeks, the neural tube later becomes the baby's spine, the brain, and the skull. So really all the midline development. And that's also why cleft palates, tongue and lip ties are also in the midline defects, you know, category. And again, the MTHFR is related to how the body processes folate, which is responsible for proper midline development in your baby. Okay, so the next supplement that I take is the Nordic Naturals Prenatal DHA. So eating whole foods that are rich in DHA and EPA, like fatty, wild-caught fish, is the best way to get enough of those nutrients, but there is a justifiable concern for mercury and other toxins in the fish, especially during pregnancy. So that's where some doctors even suggest supplementing instead of consuming fish in pregnancy. And if you don't even eat a lot of fatty fish like wild-caught salmon, you may want to consider taking a supplement. If I were to eat a salmon, I would just skip this for the day. But the Nordic Naturals is a very reputable manufacturer that delivers the healthy benefits of DHA and EPA without the risk of the toxicity that we talked about. So super high quality and what the American Pregnancy Association recommends taking this brand. So the recommended daily intake for pregnant women should be a minimum of 300 mcgs of DHA at the very least. So it's super important for pregnant women and especially breastfeeding women to get enough DHA and EPA. But I would like to mention that omega-3s before you go and shop for other brands, omega-3s come in several forms. There are, you know, the fish oil and the algae oil for a vegan option. And these two sources are much more reliable for getting the correct amount of EPA and DHA. Like your prenatals, fish oil comes both in natural and processed forms. The processing can affect the form of fatty acid. And like before, this is important because some forms are better absorbed than the others. Processed fish oils are more vulnerable to oxidation, is less easily absorbed, and they usually are super stinky. So you want to look for brands that contain omega-3s in the free fatty acids and are third-party tested, which is super important. So what is DHA? <laughs> DHA is short for docosahexaenoic acid, is an omega-3 fatty 
fatty acid that plays a key role in brain health. During pregnancy and breastfeeding, the research-backed benefits of omega-3, EPA, and DHA include supporting the healthy development of the fetal brain, eye, and nervous systems, healthy birth weight and gestational length, healthy immune system development, um, which is super important while you're pregnant, <laughs> positive mood and well-being in mothers, and attention and focus in infants and children. So I did a little more digging because I just love the science behind nutrients, <laughs> being a nutrition major. For the baby, DHA is essential for brain and eye development in, in the womb, in developing babies. So these organs grow rapidly during a woman's last trimester of pregnancy and the first few years of life. Getting enough omega-3s during pregnancy is associated with numerous benefits for the child, including higher intelligence, better communication and social skills, fewer behavioral problems, decreased risk of developmental delay, and decreased risk of ADHD, autism, and cerebral palsy. In a study of 82 babies, the mother's DHA levels before childbirth accounted for 33% of the difference in the child's problem-solving ability at age one, suggesting a link between higher DHA levels in mothers and better problem-solving in their children. Studies showed that infants whose mothers supplemented with DHA during pregnancy also had a healthier immune function. As for the mom, the omega-3 EPA and DHA support healthy labor and delivery outcomes and have also been shown to support healthy mood. Studies have shown that EPA and DHA help support mood and well-being in the postpartum period as well. Omega-3 supplements during pregnancy might help reduce the risk of premature birth. So omega-3 fatty acids, especially DHA, may improve the length and quality of your sleep, which is super important during pregnancy. It's also been known to lower blood pressure and support circulation, also important in pregnancy. The next supplement that I'll be going over is the Solaray liposomal vitamin C. So vitamin C protects the cells and can keep them healthy. It's found in a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. Easily can be attained through diet. But if you feel like you're not eating adequate sources of vitamin C, a supplement may be needed. So the dietary reference intake of vitamin C when pregnant is 85 milligrams per day. It's safe up to 2,000 milligrams. So I'm gonna read a little bit of the science. There's some limited evidence that taking too much vitamin C in the form of supplements during pregnancy may increase the risk of preterm birth. Um, excessive vitamin C can also upset your stomach, so it's important to stay within those ranges. If you're taking a prenatal vitamin and eating a diet with a variety of fruits and veggies, you're probably getting plenty of vitamin C, so there's no need to take a supplement. So the reason I get the liposomal vitamin C is because, again, that is the most bioavailable form of vitamin C. Liposomal vitamin C delivers up to 200% more vitamin C to your cells, your tissues, your organs than a regular old synthetic vitamin C supplement. One main reason I was advised by my midwife to maybe focus on vitamin C during pregnancy is because it helps develop a strong amniotic sac. My water broke um, just randomly before labor had started and so this pregnancy, I don't want that to really happen again for several reasons. There are many benefits for a strong water bag because the risk of infection for mother and the baby is remains low when your water bag stays intact. Also, the amniotic fluid in the bag insulates the umbilical cord. The baby is better able to navigate through the pelvis during labor. It's said to be much easier, gentler labor if 
your water stays intact. So studies show that consuming vitamin C 100 milligrams daily decreases the rate of premature rupture of membranes from 27% to 7% of pregnancies. It also increases iron absorption. Adequate vitamin C intake also helps improve um, the uptake of iron from your diet. It also helps boost or fight infection and boost a strong immune system. The next supplement that I take, this is number four, is the Women's Femdophilus Probiotics. Okay, so what are probiotics? Just off the top of my head, they are the beneficial bacteria that is naturally in your gut that help support your systems in your body. Specifically, Femdophilus has a proprietary polysaccharide matrix which protects the bacteria from stomach acid so that it actually enhances the probiotic bacteria survival so it can get to your lower intestines and do its job. So, study shows that probiotics may help pregnant women with GBS colonization. My midwife really informed me that there are certain specific strands that are known to combat GBS. The combination of the two strands are lactobacillus rhamnosus and lactobacillus ruteri RC14. These resulted in a statistically significant increase in the number of pregnant women without GBS colonization at the time of delivery. And if you don't know about GBS, it's a, it's a common um, colonization of bacteria that is in a lot of women. Um, so you can Google that and learn about it yourself. Lactobacillus rhamnosus and lactobacillus ruteri may help reduce the need for it antibiotic treatment during delivery and may reduce the risk of GBS transmission to the baby, giving the baby a better start in life. It also is helpful in maintaining vaginal health. It supports the health of the urinary tract, improves your gut health, your digestion, bloating, acid reflux, your mood because your gut is also known as your second brain. Probiotics might help control blood glucose levels in pregnancy as well. The fifth vitamin that I take is the Nordic Naturals Vitamin D3. So I take 1000 I use that and because vitamin D now has extensive research supporting its role in healthy immune function, healthy cell division, and bone health, vitamin D invests in the well-being of your baby by supporting healthy bone development. For pregnant women and breastfeeding women, 600 IUs is the recommended daily intake with an upper limit of 4,000 IUs per day. So a max of taking 4,000. So be sure to you know take into account of what's in your prenatals, what's in your DHA, and also your diet things like that. But there are a very short list of foods that contain vitamin D, such as traditional cod liver oil, fermented cod liver oil, or being outside for 30 minutes a week are safe sources, yet sometimes can be challenging to achieve. Most people get their vitamin D supplement through fortified foods, um, which is actually synthetic, so remember that. But anyways, the average prenatal vitamin contains about 400 IUs of vitamin D, so additional supplementation should be taken daily. Okay, like the other supplements, vitamin D comes in different forms. The cholecalciferol, which is the vitamin D3, which is what I take, is the most absorbable and utilized form in the body. But if you are looking for a vegan source, you should choose the ergocalciferol form, which is vitamin D2, although it is 25% less potent if that's valuable to you. So quality is important. So what's recommended, again, during pregnancy is the Nordic Naturals brand. Um, a vitamin D3, a thousand I use in the natural cholecalciferol 
form. <laughs> That's super hard to say. So again, synthetic man-made vitamin D doesn't have sulfate molecules. Animal studies show that synthetic form of vitamin D can actually cause damage or calcification to arteries. So keep in mind, especially if you're getting a lot of vitamin synthetic fortified vitamin D in your diet. A recent study found women taking 4,000 IUs of vitamin D daily had the greatest benefits in preventing preterm labor and births and infections. Deficiency with vitamin D is also related to preeclampsia. I thought this was interesting as well. Baby's teeth start budding under the gums at about 10 weeks gestation so in the belly. So if you have low vitamin D levels during pregnancy, you may be setting your little one up for some cavities in the future. And here's why. In a recent study, children born to women with lower levels of vitamin D, 21.6% of them had enamel defects, which leave teeth more susceptible to dental cavities. Tooth decay was found in 33.6% of the children born to women with the lowest levels of vitamin D. So there you go. The last but not least supplement that I take is the Frontier Co-op brand of organic red raspberry leaf tea. I'm calling it a supplement because it's, you know, not normally ingested. Um, it is a herb and you can drink it in tea forms. I'm just calling it a supplement because it's something that I do in pregnancy. So the red raspberry leaf tea comes from the red raspberry plant and this herbal tea has been used for centuries to support respiratory, digestive, and uterine health. Red raspberry leaf tea is known to be rich in vitamins and minerals such as vitamin C, E, and A, and a variety of B vitamins. Mag magnesium, potassium, calcium, and phosphorus. It also contains a trace of minerals such as zinc, iron, chromium, and manganese. Midwives recommend waiting until the second trimester to start consuming red raspberry leaf tea. So with your doctor or midwife's approval, it's suggested to start one cup of red raspberry leaf tea per day starting at the second trimester. And you can kind of you know, lessen or, you know, go up to two cups depending on how you feel. Before you go off and buy your raspberry tea, the ingredients of the tea should read and contain a single ingredient, nothing else should be in it, but organic red raspberry leaves or leaf, or they sometimes label it organic raspberry leaves or leaf. So teas to avoid are raspberry flavored herbal teas, which may have other ingredients like hibiscus, which is you're supposed to avoid in pregnancy, um, rose hips, apples, elderberries, things like that. Also natural and artificial flavors. So not as potent and not real. <laughs> so one reason I consume red raspberry leaf tea in pregnancy is because the uterus needs a lot of vitamins and minerals to function properly. And red raspberry leaf tea has almost all of those nutrients that it needs. Red raspberry leaf tea has been known to reduce pain during labor and after birth by toting the muscles used during labor and delivery and also labor may be shorter and less painful. Also helps balance postpartum hormones. I continue drinking this through postpartum period. It also has high mineral contents which helps bring in breast milk of many women improves the strength of the amniotic sac, so I've got a double whammy right there, improves the effectiveness of a contraction. Studies have shown that red raspberry leaf tea can help to make labor faster and reduce complications and interventions during birth. One study found that women who consume red raspberry leaf tea regularly are less likely to go overdue or give birth prematurely. These women may also be less likely to receive an artificial rupture of their membranes or require a cesarean c-section, forceps, or 
vacuum birth than the women in the control group. So very helpful information right there and um, motivating information. I hope that helps you. That's all I have for you in this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.